Hey guys, it is week one of the Curry Cup with the Sharks and the Pumas kicking things off this week. If we look at the table, the Sharks and the Western Province, that's the Stormers for everyone that's from other countries. That's the Stormers' other name when they play in the Curry Cup. The Sharks and the Stormers play a vital role in this week one, especially the Western Province that's playing against the Bulls. If the Western Province do pull off a win there, the Sharks should pull off a win here. If they do get wins, the top of that table will be very close. Remember, the table from the Super Rugby Unlocked is carried over to this Curry Cup season. When we look at the history between the two sides, the Sharks, they have four from five so far this season. The last one out, they were pretty close actually against the Griquas and Kimberley. Uh, then the game against the Stormers that they should have played were cancelled last week. One wonders what would have happened to the table at the moment if that game was played, the Bulls would still have been champions at the end of the day. Then the Pumas, they are one out of five so far in the season. They've only beaten the Griquas, who is the only team under them in the standings. They were close against the Stormers in that one game that they do that they did play. And then last week, I thought they were the better team in the second half against the Bulls. So they are a side that you need to beat in the first half because that second half is a half that they do really play well. Uh, the last game these two teams did play in the Super Rugby Unlocked season, the Sharks beat the, the Pumas by 42-19. to 19. Then we head into the teams that were picked for this weekend. Liam Hendricks, he comes in for this game, and he's scrumming against Thomas Dutoy, who's also back for the Sharks. They had a couple of problems with uh, tight head props, or with props in general, for with COVID and all this stuff that's most of their changes are enforced due to that so they are the changes for the side in front row and they are going up against each other directly Oxenche has been scrumming really well Kramer as well then the two hookers Van Fieren he's also doing well for the side I, I actually think Uesta has done a better job at hooker for the side Harpia van Skoer last week yes he did score a try from the mall but I think Honestly, the Pumas could have won the game if their lineout was better. They lost so many lineouts in crucial areas of the game that I thought they could have actually won the game against the Bulls in that second half. So, hopefully, Hoppy van Squared, he does improve the, his lineout throwing a little bit. Obviously, it's not just him. Landberg and Janse van Vieren also carries the weight of getting that ball. And they are up against Ruben van Jerden and Andrews. And they are difficult guys to actually beat at line-out time. They are very good in the air. And now they have another option in the air with JJ van der Mesh playing at number 7. That's the, that's an experiment. He hasn't played there before at this level. It's kind of like a Peter Stef the two-way moving from a lock to a number 7. It's the same kind of size player. It's a very big number 7 you'll have over there. Dylan Richardson, you'll remember him as a hooker as well. So... Two, lo two flankers that's playing out of position actually at the moment. But Dylan Richardson, he actually is a flanker more or less. Then Tembelani Boli, he's at number 8. Also out of position, he's actually a flanker. I haven't seen him play at number 8. You can maybe let me know. Daniel Martins, he comes in at number 6. Then uh, Kleinans, he shifts to number 8. I haven't seen too much of Kleinans. He's been quite quiet in that loose 4 trio from the Pumas. The other... Two usually shines out a little bit more for, for for them. But there's a couple of injuries now or guys that have moved on from the side and uh, things like that. So he finds himself at number eight. Maybe he's a little bit more busy. At number nine, Gunter Smits. He comes back at the, in that spot. He's up against Nohamba. Gunter Smits, I think the Pumas really went a lot better when he came on to the side last week when he came from the bench. And I thought... That the whole season that he is playing really well at number 9. He's a very fast player. Gets the ball out very quickly. Fila Bosov versus Cohen Bosch. Two number 10s has been in good form. Co Cohen Bosch especially. I think he's probably the in-form number 10 in this competition so far. Really in competition with Mornay Stein at the moment actually. Number 12s. Marius Lowe versus Mugajima. He's in at number 12. It, he's in for Van der Bank. It's actually very weird for me that he's in for Van der Bank. Because he's been in great form so far. I think 
they want to give a lot of these guys that made a big impact in the second half against the Bulls a go in the start of the game this week. Then Ward at number 13 continues as the captain against Cronier. At the wings, Penke and Tamwe, they are the wingers for the Sharks versus Yubar and Talyard. Both of them have been finishing well, especially Talyard. Yubar, I haven't seen him much actually, so I can't really say that he's been finishing well. At the fullbacks, I think this is an exciting battle. Devin Williams, his left boot has been crucial for the, the Puma so far this season. They use him at the correct times. He does find that spaces in the back as well. And then he's a dangerous runner with a ball as well. Moni Lebuk at number 15 comes in with uh, Fulmunk that is injured now for them. He literally played one game for his new team and now he's injured. Uh, quite a long, serious injury as well. I think Moni Lebuk and Cohen Bosch has had a good combination at 10 and 15. So it was weird that they actually did switch them out anyway. So that's a good combination that will continue. When we look at the substitutions, Dan Joste, he finds himself on the bench with Janse van Rensburg going up against him. Both of the, the props for the Pumas are changed, Grunewald and Maritz. Then Valentine and Backhouse are there as well. September, he held his foot on number 9 last week. Not too well, I think, if I have to be honest. Van der Bank, he's at 22. Like I said, he's had a good season for the Pumas. Probably one of the standout players so far. And then Mafura at number 23. He had one break that was a very good one last week, if I remember correctly. He got the ball and he just sprinted through that whole ball side. For the Sharks, they have quite a few new players on the bench. Like I said, they had a lot of injuries and COVID-enforced changes. Andrew Jacobs, he makes his debut this weekend. Uh, Zane Davids also a debut. He's a seven star. He'll probably play on flanker. Can't wait to actually see him on the 15s. Then Norche as well, number eight. Very good player to bring on for them. He, the, the, the bench is a very quick bench, so they're going to up the ante in the second half with Cameron Wright as well. Werner Koch, obviously, and Sibun Corsi. So they're going to up the ante in the second half. The Pumas are a lot better than you might think of them. They are just unpredictable some games they play a lot worse than others some games they actually look like beating the big teams do are they gonna do it again this week i don't think so again every time a smaller team frightens a big team like like that like they did last week that the next team kind of ups the ante and becomes a little bit better so i do think the sharks will win this game by about 16 points the pumas they always stand a chance if they do a change a few little things if their defense becomes a little bit better especially in the first half things could happen for them so that's my prediction for this game guys let me know your prediction down in the comments below check out these videos next to me hit the subscribe button and then i'll see you for the next one cheers <laughs>